T quotes and I'm here to show you how to make a floating evening star as I like to call it other people call it a floating Ohio star block it's a very simple block and you're going to need three additional tools other than your basic sewing supplies you're going to need a piece of sandpaper or a sandpaper board this is a 400 grit sandpaper I have a basic ruler for drawing my lines and then I also have a pencil for drawing lines and I do like to use a mechanical pencil because you don't have to worry about your point it's always sharp and this is one that is a disposable one but you can get one that is non disposable as well and then I do have other equipment that I'm using I'm actually using my die cutting system because I only need two sizes of units. I need four and a half inch squares and then I need three and a half inch squares. So let's talk about the cutting. Actually your print is going to be your background and for your background you're going to need eight four and a half inch squares. What I did to cut my squares is I decided to use the take five die because it has four and a half inch squares that finishes at four inches on this board. So that's the only thing that I cut. I just laid my pieces over the four and a half inch piece. And then I cut my pieces out. This take five board is AccuQuilt number 50223. And this one will only work in the studio. If you have the gold die system, you can also use die number 55060. So that's what the only thing that I need cut from my print. Also from my actual star print, which is going to be in the middle, the white is actually going to be the star. You need one four and a half inch square. Also from your white, you're going to need eight three and one half inch squares and again you could use your AccuQuilt go die it's number five five oh oh six but I did not have that so again I'm using a studio die here it is my five zero two zero six and it is my square three and a half that finishes at three inches so very simple cutting and so now we can go ahead and get to the first step you want to take your white three and a half inch squares and on the wrong side of those you want to draw diagonal lines and I have already done that on this one you want to draw line diagonally from corner to corner and technically that is all that is required in this step but because I am a person that likes to save everything, I draw another line a half inch away so that I can also sew on that line as well. And then I'll end up with some extra half square triangles. This is very important if I'm going to make a full quilt then maybe I can use these as border treatments or I can use them as some corner treatments. So with this block alone we'll be making eight of them and I just think it's a waste if you already have them then you can use them in your project if you can't use them in this project I like to save them up and then I'll use them in another project in the future so I do that to all eight of my squares so the next step would be to place one of your three and a half inch squares on top of one of your print four and a half inch squares this is what makes it floating if you didn't want this to float you would just use two and a half inch squares and it wouldn't float in the middle here when it joins and I'll show you what I mean in a minute but you will place your square so that the longest diagonal line from corner to corner is on the inside you don't want to place it like that you don't want that you want to place it so that the long diagonal line is on the inside once you've done that you want to stitch on this line from corner to corner 
and then also stitch on this line that's drawn a half inch away when you do that you'll have a unit that looks like this it's actually been sewn on both lines and then the next step is that we're actually going to cut in the middle we're going to put our quarter inch line on the drawn line and we're going to cut So when you cut this apart, you actually now have two pieces and we want to press this seam down and then we have an extra half square triangle unit that is two and three fourths but you can also square these up to two and a half if you like. So once we do this step. We want to take our next square, we want to place it so that this diagonal line is on the inside and again we're going to stitch from one end to the other. And once you've done your stitching again, then we're going to go ahead and trim again right through the middle. And this time we've got a weird little extra half square triangle, but that's okay. It's still something that can be used in a crumb quilt or a crazy quilt. And then we want to go ahead and press this seam down as well. And then when you do that, you'll have a unit that looks like this once you press it. So I need to do this technique to four of the background squares and then once I've done that I will come back and show you the next step. I'm back with my four sewn star point units. These are actually going to be floating star points and I have my one four and a half inch center square in the star fabric and then I have four the four additional squares that are cut four and a half inches in the background print fabric. So next we're going to lay it out we take our center square on our white and put it in the middle and then we're just going to put our star points around that center square. And then as you can see by the blank positions we just add our remaining squares in the corner and we end with a nine patch block that we have to sew. So I'll start sewing these pieces together and then once those are sewn I'll add these on to the ends and then go through and sew my rows here. So I will go do that and I will come back with my completed nine patch block. Here's my completed floating evening star or floating Ohio star however you want to call it and I did press my seams in opposite directions in the center row I pressed my seams toward the white square and then on the top and bottom rows I pressed my seams out toward the print square so when you turn it over you've got a pretty cool looking back I gotta press that <laughs> but yeah so that's your block I hope you will make some. Your block should finish at 12 inches, which means right now it should be 12 and one half inch from raw edge to raw edge. And then I did just cut my dog ears off. I did not square these up. But I thought that I would show you some things that you could do if you wanted a corner treatment on a quilt. You could make a pinwheel block with these. So you could do something like that with these. You could also reverse it where you have the white on this side as well. So if you wanted it that way, that's doable as well.
so it's the exact same thing your pen wheel just floats a little differently and you could also use these pieces to do some floating with as well and here you've got this weird funky shape that's floating but it's still pretty cool too and think these are free blocks and there are patterns that actually have you make this shape that makes it so complicated but you already got the complicated shape already pieced for you you could also turn them where the fat end is in the middle and you'll end up with a shape like that I've also seen that shape as well being made in a quilt block and here it is already made for you and then you can also alternate them with your pinwheel blocks where you put all of your centers in and then you have a block like that you can also rotate your lights in and end up with a little different block so it just depends on how you want to use these extra units if you're again making a lot of blocks you're going to have a lot of extra units left over so that may be something you might want to consider so thank you for watching i hope this video was helpful don't forget to like comment and subscribe hit that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever i upload a video and when i go live and don't forget to share my channel with your friends Thank you next time. Bye-bye.